Ready? So we're, what I just showed you was velocity banking, the concept itself, worldly system that was invented, I believe, by Australians. That's as far back as I um, could find some, some data on it. By the way, just so we get a little origin story, the concept velocity banking, um, I discovered it from, a, uh, from the Mormons. Uh, they were, they run, there's a uh, real estate educational school uh, called Renatus, and there's a meaning behind that word, I forget what it means. Heard him do a presentation, the owner, forgot his name, but he said he discovered velocity banking in Australia, right? In Australia, they use something called offset accounts, and it's how the they over there in Australia, they pay their mortgages off in like 10 years or less. Whereas in America, we're, we're doing 20, 30 years, we're carrying mortgages, right? In some cases, 40 years. Not sure, I, has anyone ever seen a 40 year mortgage? I, seen, I have a client, I, I seen a couple clients, 40 years. I'm like, it go that long? Wow, that's a generation. All right, that's insane. So, just so you understand the, the origin of it, where it comes from, it's a world man-created system, right? And what I always wrestle with when I'm engaging in these non-traditional financial strategies, I, I ask myself, is there a way like I can find scripture that can somewhat give me a little insight on these advanced financial strategies? Is this the truth? Like I, I am the... I will criticize my own work, and I do things like this where I just make videos, I go to my audience, because I want, I truly want to seek the kingdom first and all his righteousness. I want to get to the truth as quickly, as fast as humanly possible, because I don't have a lot of time on this earth. I know I'm 26, but it could all end tonight, tomorrow. I don't know. So I am obsessed with finding absolutes, absolutes absolute truth in, in what I do. So we're going to take a break with Velocity Banking in the Kingdom. We're going to trans, transition to commercial jurisdiction because this is what you all are familiar with, right? It's going to take a long time or, or maybe not. Maybe it clicks. I don't know. But uh, that's going to take some time for us to, you know, come together. I just wanted to expose you to what is happening to give you an example of what those steps look like, if you do some research on the Mormon church or the Vatican, right? The Vatican city is a sovereign nation, right? The Mormon church, they're, they literally operate in their own jurisdiction. If you look at certain cultures, right? I love studying different cultures, like for example, Asians, right? The Asian culture, they literally have their own, um, you know, in New York and California, they have Chinatown. They have their own banks. They have their own associations. So when their people come from um, their native land, come to, to America, they have these sponsorship systems that sets them up with businesses, college degrees. And this is all tax accepted, not tax exempt. They don't need authority from the US government in some of these different cultural groups, these, these self-funded, unincorporated associations. So they're operating squarely outside of commercial jurisdiction. That's how some of these cultures do it. When you look at um, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, as an individual, okay, I'm not saying this is right, because this is not what Bible tells us, but individually you can create your own empire, right? I won't call it a kingdom. You can build your own empire, right? With a multitude of a complex trust layer, family office, trust, offshore bank accounts, dual citizenship, and you can basically be the king of your domain here on earth. Problem with that is that there's another king that if you're not in alignment with him, it's only a matter of time before it all comes crumbling down. 
or somebody takes it from you, right? So when I looked at that, I was like, you know, that sounds great. I can make a bunch of money for myself, individual, you know, live a good life. But I'm more interested in this eternal uh, 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 feature because we're only on planet Earth for about 100 years, maybe less. So, you know, I could either have it all here right now, but I'd have to exchange my, you know, uh, uh, what is it? Your soul, right? So... Ready? Got your numbers ready? All right. Four major numbers. Let's see how, how quicker we can go now. All right? So you got to know your numbers. And I'm going to go try and do a couple case studies. Okay. So income, you want to know my income per month? Yeah. Um, seven seven dollars $7,424. Seven thousand four hundred twenty-one. Twenty-four dollars. Twenty-four. This is net after taxes. After taxes. Okay. Total expenses. Um, my total expenses comes to four thousand four hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Four ninety-nine. Yep. This is including all all debt payments. It's including Spectrum, two credit cards, household stuff, gas, lights, water, Love it. Amazon, cell phone, um, insurance, life insurance, the gym, huh. is self giving, pay. Is giving tithing included in there? Yeah, and tithing. Yep. Okay. Are you investing any money? Um, yeah, I have. Uh, an IRA, which I pay uh, every paycheck, two hundred and fifty dollars. I put in there from the net. Yep. How many times do you get paid per month? I get paid uh, every two weeks. So that's two times two fifty, right? Yes. Okay, so five hundred. Was it included in here or no? Yes, it's included. It comes directly yep. out of my uh, check before, and then I get that seven. Oh, okay. So yep. that's on top of it from the gross. Got it. So. Are you saving money? Yeah, I pay myself $250, and then that goes into my um, savings account, and then I pay myself an additional $150 into my checking account. From that? You included yes. it? Yep. So net cash flow, what do you got? Net cash flow, where is that? Um, $3,964. Okay. Total debt? The total debt was uh, four, four, two, nine, 4279. 4,227? Four, four, no, no, it's the... Just 4,279? Yes. You got no other debt? No. Oh, you're almost debt free. Well, the debt, the debt is the credit cards and all, you know. No mortgage? No, no mortgage. Okay. You, you, you rent or you Both own, of my you cars own. are paid off. Okay. Um, I go to Divi, which is rent to own. Rent -to so own. half of my money goes into an account. The other half goes into um, paying the rent. And I've been with Divi three years. And then at some point you're able to buy. buy so it, right? I'm looking to buy right. now. So me and my husband are starting to look to start buying. Well, it's called, it's spelled D-I... D-I-V-V-Y. D-I-V-V-Y, yeah, I heard about this. You might want to take a note. It's a yeah. unique way to get a home, right? Yes. There's another one, uh, a non-profit um, Habitat for Humanity. Anybody familiar with that one? Yes. That's like another way to get a property. I think you have to, there's certain requirements, right? Mm-hmm. Little task. Okay, so... What is your financial goal? Well, my financial goal is to buy a building for my life coaching business and for all of my health and wellness business um, programs. So I want to buy a building and put all of my programs inside of one building instead of doing it in, in my home and then instead of doing it um, for SUMA. I, I teach my health and wellness programs for SUMA. Okay. So you have a multitude of different businesses yes okay and you're looking to acquire debt right mm -hmm. uh, 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 
commercial building? I'm yes. Okay. Have you looked at like quotes and stuff? And yeah, I, I've been looking for about a year, and the the, the mortgage the on there is is really high to to rent something out right now, and then and then to buy. There's a lot of um, stuff that is wrong with the buildings, and you got to pay, and then didn't, didn't do the buyout. I mean, the build out, you know, because it doesn't all come with everything that you need. So there's a buyout are that you, lo- you are you looking to buy something that is already built or yes. you're gonna build okay, okay. Yes. already built gotcha locally locally okay and so uh, w- what's the like price range of like what would a mortgage look like well mortgage. on that part I'm cheap I'm like really cheap so <laughs> um, <laughs> um I I prefer anything under under 1200 but I've been running into because you what mean, I you want you mean the payment a month, yes, because right. the, the the room, the square footage that I need, uh-huh. I have I have two programs. The one is the fitness program where I do the, my Zumba and drum fit and my mindfulness, so I need space for that. And then the other part is the life coaching where I need to do, you know, the one-on-ones and the group sessions, and I also do the... Um, employment, helping people find employment. So um, I walked away from the corporate job because I was creating um, all these curriculums for job and family services and other local businesses. And I was creating all that for them and I was facilitating it. And now I'm like, I can do that for myself because I, they messed around and left an invoice on the copy machine and for the programs that I had created and I was facilitating through them, they were getting thousands of dollars and I was only mm. getting this little, so I was like, no, I'm not creating nobody else's nothing. I'm gonna do it for myself. Okay, like it, like it. And just to capitalize on that clap, what did, what did you tell us during the break? So um, I went on to my Amazon account and I had three credit cards that I was using on Amazon and I just, I just deleted them all and I just put my business credit card on there so I won't do it anymore. All right. I love it. Yeah, with free cash flow like that, I can see myself wasting a couple dollars. Right. She was talking about 400 a month, right? Look how much cash flow she got. It, she don't feel it. I don't until, feel it. Until you feel it. Right. right. And then it's too late. And that's why I was sharing with some of the you know ladies back there. I don't have anything that's demanding me to 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 spin, you know, there's no no pressure on me, you know, and so I, I have money to spend. My bills is paid. I don't have any, you know, really debt, and right. my, both it. of my car, my truck is paid, my car is paid. So it's like I can spend. Yep. Some might argue that when you start, people here who are, you know, not quite here yet, nearly debt free. This is where it really gets challenging. So if you think. Money is tough when you don't have a lot. When you start getting a lot of money, you start produ- that's when it really gets tough. Because you're like, where do I put my money now? I went from not having enough to having, some would say, too much. And not knowing what to do with it. That's like an even scarier position to be in. So your cash flow times 12 with that number that you gave. So we're cash flowing 47568 a year. Okay. You want to buy a building, and how much would the loan be, the building, about? Because I know you gave me the payment, but I want to know, like, the balance itself. So I, I, I'm just going to go by the one that I just looked at in Kenmore, and which I heard was a bad investment and bad area. Um, so he wanted, <laughs> he wanted 52 to 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 buy the building. I mean, I'm sorry, 152 to buy the building. 152,000. Okay. But it was a lot of stuff wrong with the building, so it was going to cost me almost that to get the building fixed. Mhm. So, 150 to get it, 150 to fix it up, 300. Yeah, but 300 they were total. they were lawyers and they were like, you know, this would be a great investment because we are two lawyers that own it. We're from California. And they was trying to sell me all those big dreams. And, mm-hmm. and, okay. and so I went and got two people to walk through the building, and they both were said, they told me no. Okay. By, let's say we found the building, 
right? It'd be on. <laughs> With <laughs> I'm sorry. What would be like I want to find out what your questions are in terms of what you're going through. And then I guess so I'll ask you by what means are you trying to accumulate the property? You know, do you have an intent to pay it off early or are you trying to just, you know, acquire something and then essentially service the debt where you really don't have an intent to pay it off because you're going to do all these tax deductions and then you're just going to create a ton of cash flow and that cash flow is going to go to different projects or reinvesting in the business. So I kind of want to get an idea of where you're at and what your questions are. Th those are good questions. Um, I really haven't thought about that. I just wanted to get the building. I wanted to run all my programs through there. I wanted to hire other life coaches and one therapist. I wanted to um, also hire um, fitness trainers who can use the building when I'm not using it so that they can pay the mortgage. And so I won't have to pay. So that's, that's wow. how far I have gotten yeah. with what I want to do. Sounds like you're trying to build one of like this model. I see it down in South Florida. I'm not sure if you guys have it here as well. But you ever walk into a salon and there's an esthetician, there's a, a makeup and hair, there's a, uh, and they have their own little cubicles. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. what that's kind of yeah. like? You're doing that for the coaching industry. Yes. That's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So people have an office where they can bring their clients to because there's a ton of people working from home doing coaching yeah. calls. The co space, co office the space. Co office is, space. Right. Yeah, I want that as well. So I have included all that in. I have a business plan that's already done uh, and. So, and that's included in the business plan. Um, also want the bookstore. I have written four books and a life coaching um, training guide. So I want all those books. I want a library where they can go in and purchase those books as well. Yeah. So I, I have the vision. I just, yeah. I need the help with trying to figure it out. Um, so that, that's what I want. Okay. Yeah. So from what I'm getting, it, are you in a position where you're trying to like either do velocity banking of some sort or you're just going to, you know, get a loan, get the property? Because I feel like you might be getting into business planning, business structure that's a bit out of my element. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a, a, a Kenneth or maybe some other business people in the house here might be able to provide some guidance. I want to make sure that I'm not losing the crowd here. Philosophy, I just heard of that, so I don't even know if I pronounced it right. I just heard that because you right. said that today. So my confusion, I'm very confused on because I have been trying to get um, my credit up, and I have been trying to get, to get access to, the to get access to the building and get okay. access to the loan. So I went through Divi because they built your credit up. And, and you would use Divi to get this? Um, I used Divi to help build my credit up because my credit, credit wasn't good. And get your own property, To right? get my own property. Right, right, right. And okay. so I, I'm just confused because every time I go to the bank, they're telling me I went through um, Huntington, and they were like, you can get the bank, you can get a loan, and I'm showing them what I make and everything. And because uh, nine years ago I filed bankruptcy, they didn't consider me. Okay. So I think you are a bit out of my element and expertise, to be just fully transparent and honest. Um, I don't see a debt issue here. You're trying to build credit. It seems like you have a source already that's helping you build credit. I only know one other professional um, credit person. Her name is Brittany Green. If you go to my website, DenzelRodriguez.com, you go to resources. Her, her name is there, and you can check her out, or you can look up, like I said, or find someone in the light church that does okay. credit repair and work with them to qualify for this. It, like, it doesn't, I don't know where I can be of value so far. Yeah. Because, again, not a lot of debt. If you had an intent to, to pay this off, you get the loan, and then you could acquire, say, a business line of credit, Right. Or you could go with, um, I don't think, first lien HELOCs. I don't know if you can get it on a commercial property. I don't think that's the case. I might be wrong. Um, but all in all, I don't want to feel like I'm 
putting you to the yeah. side. Yeah. But I definitely want to get into someone's numbers because yes. I know there's definitely people here that are like in debt, wanting to get out of debt. Exactly. Yeah. You are in a good financial position. I think just having a conversation with some other business people to figure out what, what we can okay. accomplish there. Okay. So, Thank you. If you will, I'd like to pass the mic to this beautiful lady right here. Because I know you were telling me you had your numbers, right? Good afternoon. My How name is Erica. Erica. I um, was following your, your guide there with my debt and expenses. And I, my, my whole goal is to get of course debt free and also to build something for my children and so uh, legacy right yeah, absolutely all right so let's start with your numbers okay what are you making per month 38 per month 3800 yes. net yes okay and you uh you, you work a job or is this a business well, I lost my job back in November, so I'm doing my, uh, my self-employment. So that's what brings me to 38 a month. You're receiving, you said self-employment? Mm-hmm. What is that called? Was that like... Oh, I got a cleaning service. I clean small businesses after hours. And because you're no longer working, they're providing you with income? No, I do that, but I lost my oh, daytime job. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so you're still working. Absolutely. Right, okay, making 38. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Expenses, total? Okay. And what is your, does this include saving, investing, giving, tithing? That me, yeah, all that's okay. included in there. Okay, okay. And my debt, that's with everything, is 76.5. 76.5. Okay. So, 38. Would you say your cash flow is thirteen hundred today? I'll take it. I'll accept that. That's that's accurate. That's accurate. But before we move forward, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. I, I do have a savings account, and mm -hmm. due okay. to the fact that I lost employment in November, I am so afraid to touch it to pay the bills off or, or the credit card debt off, just because I just don't know. Okay. Well, you know, we don't even really need to touch savings. Okay. So that can because I worked hard for that for uh, a lot of years. So how much have you saved up so far? About forty-five. Okay, so that is money that you sleep well at night. I don't even look that way. So forty-five k cash on hand savings, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Cash flow in thirteen hundred a month, and. Do you have a line of credit, credit card, anything that like in regards to Velocity Banking, or is this still this is new? No, I have a line of credit which I purchased a house off years ago, but the balance on that is eighteen. This is a personal line of credit. Yeah, I had a personal line of credit. Uh, which for, bank? At a Citizens Bank. It used to be Charter One. Citizens Bank. Uh -huh. Are they local? Okay, good to know. All right, so we're going to write that out because maybe someone in the crowd here might want to look them up. So Citizens Bank, you have a personal unsecured revolving line of credit for how much credit limit did you get? Do you have? They gave me 34,000. 34,000. I purchased a house for 25 and the other what is it? 7 or 8. I just did repairs on the house. What's the interest rate on that personal line of credit? The, um, the HELOC, it is... Oh, rate. this is a HELOC? Yes. Okay, so let's correct that. But go ahead, what's the interest rate? I want to say like 3.5%. Still to this day? Just, yeah, to this day. All right, because I know interest rates went up recently. Well, I, I haven't checked them. I, I think. I'm not certain. All right, so you have a home equity... Yes. Line of credit. Correct. In the second position, right? Yes. Okay. So we got a HELOC, not a P-lock. Okay, cool. So, and then I have another question as you're writing. Go ahead. Uh, my score was 813, 
and then I paid the, I paid the car off. I, I didn't actually pay it off. I did uh, what we talked about earlier, the balance transfer to a 0% interest rate. Okay. okay. Let's go ahead. I uh, did a balance transfer um, um, to pay a card off and um, the car, one of, one of the cars. So the score went from... 813 to 700 and I just don't okay. understand that at all. I don't know if it's because the account was closed. You're at 713 today? No, I was at 813 last month and today I, I look at it and say 700. Okay, so no big deal. So, so we're at a 700 credit score right now. You have a debt tool mm -hmm. and you currently owe money on that, right? Yes, I owe 18 of the 34. Yes. So we owe 18 grand, right? Do you have an exact amount? 18 to 11. 18. That's just, just specifically for the house. Um, the HELOC. Right, the HELOC itself. Correct. Right. So now, from the 76, right, 18, what other, what other debts do we have? I have a, a U.S. bank credit card for 66.96. Okay. Payment. They, they, they suggest $67 a month. I choose to give two fifty a month on that card. So you pay two fifty a month? And, and then 0% zero, zero interest for a year, and I just got it last month. Okay, so 0% till June 23. Yes. All right. And um, I have an Omaha credit card where I owe 2066. Uh, two 2066? Two, yes, and that has 4.99% for the life of the card. 4.99. What's the payment? I think I give them 50 bucks a month. You do 50. Okay, next. Best Buy. Say again? Best Buy. Okay. That's a credit card, right? Yes. I owe them about 650. Okay. And that's 0% um, interest for 12 months. As of maybe like March of 23, I, they'll start charging me. And, um, there's a Hunting, the Huntington credit card for six thirty. I'm not sure the interest rate. And then I have what was that Huntington card? Yes, for six hundred and thirty. Six hundred and thirty bucks. Yep. Okay. I have a Home Depot for two hundred. Two hundred. And a Chase for one seventy five. Seventy five bucks. No, one seventy five for Chase, and I think I owe Macy's probably about two hundred bucks. Okay. These are all credit card debts, right? Yes. What else you got? I have sixty-four twenty-six with student loans, six thousand four hundred twenty-six. So student loans, okay. Is that on deferment? Yes. So what was the number again? Sixty-four hundred. Sixty-four twenty-six. Okay. And I have a. The, my mortgage is thirty-seven thousand one seventy-eight. Okay, 37,000. So what's that interest rate at? Uh, 37,000 what? 178. 178. Okay, what interest rate? I'm not sure. Okay, no big deal. Uh, what do you pay per month? 470. 470. Okay. Any other debts? Uh, there is an auto loan for 21. 21K? Mm -hmm. So we got the car. 21. 878. 873. Do you have the interest rate on that? 5.65, I think. 5.65. And uh, monthly, monthly payment? 530. Do you know if that is amortized or simple interest? I don't know. Okay. So real quick, when you guys are gathering your numbers, right, is this valuable? As we're, as we're going through this, you guys getting value from this? This is good stuff. You see how it doesn't take a whole lot of time to just look at your numbers, right? See where you're at, evaluate it, and see how, we can, how can we best move forward. 
So when we're evaluating our debts, we want to know which debts are amortized and which ones are simple interest, okay? An amortized debt is typically your student loans, your mortgage loans. Usually the word ends with loan in, in the debt. Usually it's amortized, right? In some cases, like a car note, sometimes it's simple interest, okay? If this car is simple interest at 5.65%, the way to calculate that is you take the the balance 21,873 you times it by the interest rate 5.65 percent you're going to get a number the number is 1,235.82 divide that by 365 days she's she is paying three dollars and 38 cents a day on the uh, on the balance itself and then that incorporates into the payment right the value of simple interest debt is that it accumulates over time right so it it compounds itself over time simple interest needs time to accrue amortize means that they charge you the interest up front in advance, they front load the whole thing, right? So when you look at your mortgage payments, in the very first year, making your very first mortgage payment, majority of that payment is all interest. The bank is recovering their profit within the first 10 years, right? And then afterwards, then you're actually paying off the debt, where more and more of that payment becomes principal and less interest. Our goal is to take any of the debts that we have, whatever the rates are, whether it's simple or amortized, um, and move it into lower cost, simple interest debt. And then we manipulate the rate. So in your case, you have a debt tool. We know our numbers. You have savings on hand. You don't want to touch that. That's fine. That's not required. We have positive cash flow. We're in a good position. You've got these credit cards debt. So let me get a question from you before I start telling you what what to do what do you any questions I so far have a question. so yeah that's why I've, I, I bought the house um, from parents so I bought the house for 40 I think I lived in this house for six seven years and it's only at 37 is that's only because I'm paying the minimum requirement mm -hmm. for there I mean I feel like I'm going nowhere fast with this house okay so you got this house Yes. Right, that you got. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific question in terms of where your where your loss? Right. No. No. So so far you're with me. I'm with you right there. Right. Please. And the goal is to pay off debt. Yes, that's your goal. And then to continue to grow the savings. Grow the savings, which leads to finding out how to build a legacy. Maybe maybe repositioning this savings into a cash flow producing vehicle. Something like what Kenneth was mentioning about the PAM accounts and something, something, right? To accelerate because we're not earning anything here. In fact, you're losing money, right? This money is losing value on a daily basis, right? Faster than you can save it, right? So not, it's not pretty. Okay, so I owe 18211 on the line of credit itself. In the velocity banking world, when I am in debt on my very debt tool, Right, and Pastor and I was, you know, full transparency, he was going over his numbers with me. The goal is to bring the line of credit down because we want to position ourselves to make the next chunk, right? So one rule that I have in place is I take the credit limit of whatever debt tool we have and we times that by 66% or two-thirds, right? This is my rule of leverage. I then take cash flow per month, 13, and I times it by 12, right? To get a number and see what our chunk range is going to be. With me so far? Mike. I'm sorry, the 18-2. That's what we owe. 
I have, uh, that was what's the balance on the house where I got, the, took the heat lock, bought the house. I get 740 a month for that house, which I included in the income. So that's kind of sort of paying for itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you want to use, you want to use this debt tool to pay off other debts. Is that correct? Yes, but I'm past the 10 year mark where I can't dip into it anymore. Oh, so it's no, okay, so it's locked yeah, up. It's locked up. Okay, so we need a new debt tool. Absolutely. Okay. This is good information, guys. When I'm working with clients, this is how it be. They, they, they tell me something 40 minutes into it, and I'm like, okay, cool. Let's redo it again. See where, how can we move forward? How can we make the next move? Right? So I didn't know if it was a possibility uh, yeah. to get a HELOC on the house that I live in that I owe 37 because it's worth You might. It's worth how much? About 85. Yeah, so you might be able to go to a bank that you have a relationship, either an existing one, maybe a new one, and you can have the second lien HELOC, the HELOC itself, because you have a mortgage for 37, that's the first lien mortgage, second lien HELOC, home equity line of credit, which turned into a home equity loan. Right, it, it's no longer in its revolving period, so that ended. Right now, you're in. This is probably amortized now, right? And you have a set payment for the next 20 years, probably. That's probably how it's set up. So we could potentially go to a bank and have them refinance the home equity loan to a home equity line, reestablishing your connection to the equity in your property, so that we can cause some damage. Right. In the meantime. Depending on where our credit is, according to what the bank requirements are, we may want to do a little snowball, right? A little debt snowball. Maybe, maybe get rid of some of these little, you know, credit card debts. Um, show some good behavior with our credit. I was talking about the 15 three-day rule before. That's one strategy. There's another strategy where you know you pay half and half. But um, I honestly would rather talk to a professional tax, um, professional credit repair person, right? I have one, but again, if there's someone in the church that does it, go to them. That would be great. And you tell them what you're trying to do. You're trying to build credit so that we can access a, a new debt tool, right? So at this point, right, we, we really can't move forward. But what I will do, just so that the crowd can see what this would look like if we could incorporate Velocity Banking, I'm just going to run with it. We're going to play around with it and assume you do have a debt tool, right? We owe 18 to 11 on it. It's open revolving. And we're going to run our little scenario here. 1,300 times 12, that's cash flow, times 12 is 15,600, right? 34,000 times 66% or two thirds. And if you're wondering, Denzel, where'd you get that 66 from? That sounds satanic, right? If you're wondering where I got that from, I spoke with a very, very knowledgeable, uh, this math guru that I met many, many years ago before I started creating um, videos on, on YouTube. And he had a software that was doing velocity banking for himself. And he was talking about this relation to the credit limit versus how much you would leverage. And he was saying that, you know, two thirds, so that would be 66, 67, right? However you wanna write it, is a, is a good leveraging range. And then you compare it to how much the discretionary cash flow a, a person has. And that's developing what's called our chunk range. We want to see what our capacity is to leverage. At the end of the day, this is, there's a level of risk here, right? So we don't want to over leverage ourselves where we borrow, say, the whole 34000 right? And then the real estate crashes, and then the bank freezes your HELOC. We wouldn't want that. So we always want to leave space in the HELOC also just for um, safety precaution in case an unexpected emergency happens. Let's say you didn't have the, the savings, right? Some people will just tap into their, their HELOC. So between 22,440 and 156 would be our chunk range, right? Now, I'm at 18,211, 
So if I owe 18, I could withdraw more money out of that HELOC in this example here up to 22,440 if I wanted to. And then that would say knock out some of these little cards right here. Um, maybe that 2000, right? We, we now turn on the debt snowball hat. In my opinion, go from lowest to highest debt, you add them up and see how much money does that save us? How much cash flow do we recover, right? All that cash flow is going to go back to the HELOC. And again, when I mentioned earlier, cash flow together, right, is stronger than when it's separated. So you're another example, uh, Stephanie, earlier, how she was overpaying on zero interest. You're doing that. You're overpaying on a debt that's not charging you interest. So a great way to recover cash flow to make it stronger is we could pay the monthly minimum there and apply it to debt that is actually charging me interest for the time being. This expires June 23rd. We can assure ourselves with a, with a good strategy, by the time this expires on zero interest, I would have the capital to wipe that out in one shot rather than try to stretch it over the course of the 0% period. With me so far? I am. All right, everybody with me so far? Any questions, thoughts, concerns? All right. Okay, cool. So let me go into doing velocity banking with a line of credit, just so we can see how this actually goes down. So this person makes income, they have a job, money lands into all of your checking accounts. The moment you get paid, it lands in your checking account. When you're doing velocity banking, you have a debt tool, very first thing you do before you pay a bill, you send the entire paycheck to the line of credit. So we're gonna assume she gets $3,800 over the course of 30 days. You get paid twice, once? Twice a month. Twice a month. So $3,800 split into two, two times out of the month, money will go into the line of credit, right? So that's a manual thing that you do from your checking and you link it to your line of credit. The most simplest way to do it is to have your checking account and your debt tool at the same bank. If that's not the case, then um, you can do external transfers, but that takes a couple of days. I usually encourage my clients to bank at the same location where they get their debt tool. Just, yeah, like instant transfer. Like, like you know when you move money from your checking to your savings? Instant, that's how it would look like here in the line of credit, right? So 18,211 minus $3,800 would bring the balance down to 14,411, right? And now we evaluate our borrowing costs. Here's how we do it. 18,211 times that by 3.5%, right? Pull your calculators out, do it with me, right? You're gonna get $637. And 38 cents. Divide that number by 365, right? Divided by 365, you're gonna get a dollar 74 a day. However long she owes 18 to 11, she'll pay a dollar 74 per day every day for as long as she owes 18,000 to 11. Follow me? Cool. Now that we're gonna dump all of our income into the line of credit, it manipulates that rate down. So we go from 18 to 11 down to 14, 411. And you gotta do it again. Times it by 3.5%, divide by 365, you get a dollar 38, right? And then expenses come out of the line of credit not all at once, right? Why? Because your bills aren't due all at once in one day. You wanna keep as much money in the line of credit for as long as humanly possible, right? So out of this $2,500, 
you've got bills and everybody in here, you have bills that can be paid with a credit card and you got bills that cannot be paid with a credit card. You cannot pay your car payment with a credit card without incurring a, a fee, right? A cash advance fee. Same with the, the mortgage or any other credit card debt. I can't use a credit card to pay another credit card. So that comes from the checking account. So what I do with my clients, I say, all right, to maximize the length of time of money sitting in the line of credit is we would look at what day she gets paid, right? Each day. So you would do that in your notes. You, you take, okay, when are the days I get paid, right? And then look at when do my bills come out? What days? And can we, can we move it away from the days you get paid? So it takes more time for your money to sit in the line of credit, right? And we reduce that interest, right, tremendously. So just for simplicity, 14411 is what it went down to after income went in. Expenses are going to come out, right, over a 30-day period. So you would just add it, right, 14411 plus $2,500. Now you're at 16911 right? What do we do? Same thing, times 3.5%. This is very tedious. I get it. But once you do it a couple times, multiple times over, it starts to get exciting when it's your numbers, right? So the next step, after you've evaluated the three main numbers in a month, which is the highest balance you started with, the lowest balance, which is you know all your income going in, and then what it goes back up to as you're paying your bills, right? Those are three distinct um, days. And what I do is try to get an average cost of borrowing on a monthly basis, average cost of borrowing, right? So you would take these three numbers, add it, right? So you add all three of them up, 162 plus 138 plus 174, right? You get $4.74, right? And then you divide by three to get the average cost of borrowing per day, right? Divide by three, $1.58. So her average cost of borrowing is $1.58. At this point, I ask my clients, would you rather pay $1.58 or would you rather send your money to all these different things, paying $10, $15, $20, $500 dollars in interest? Most people go with this number. I say, oh, great. Great. Now we got to prove it, right? Always want to prove your math. So 158 times 30 days is 47 bucks. So her borrowing costs, if she can get a line of credit at this interest rate, which I probably doubt in this environment today, interest rates have gone up. Despite what they give us, the rate, not nearly as important as what we actually will pay in interest, right? This number is less than 3.5%, technically speaking, right? So 47.41 is my cost of borrowing in that one month if I transitioned to velocity banking, right? So now we're incorporating the concept itself, money going in, money coming out, Cash flow stays, 100% of my cash flow is principal, right? Working hard for me in my advantage. Now, to spice things up a little bit, what she can do with those bills that can be paid with a credit card, we can get some cash back rewards, right? Uh-oh, this is where it starts to get a little fun because I want to offset that borrowing cost to zero. So from that $2,500, let us just say $1,200 can get run through credit cards, and maybe she earns 1.5% cash back. That's $18. So 18 bucks a month, let's just say, could be more, could be less, 47 41 minus 18 29 bucks. 29 41 
is my cost of borrowing for month one. You realize that three, four months into it, that number is going to technically go to zero, right? After three, four months. And now we're just doing velocity banking on the number itself, preparing to make a chunk of this magnitude to these debts because we want to reroute 4.99, 5.65. This is on deferment, right? Anytime we're dealing with zero interest debt, deferred debt, I tend to ignore it. We don't know what the interest rate is on the mortgage. If it's higher than this, then that's, that's an obvious, right? But if it's lower, we just have to prove the math, right? We look at the internal costs of what's going on there to make a decision, right? So in your case, we can't do anything yet with velocity banking. What we can do is improve our credit by simply applying the snowball concept, leftover cash flow each and every month, you know, knock out these little ones. That's easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? Nothing crazy. Then um, we can incorporate, maybe connect with a credit expert. Doesn't hurt, maybe get a consultation. Show them where you're at. They can, you know, point you to what's going on. What can we improve on? Then from there, we talk to a bank, right? You want to take some notes? You want to write this down? I got a question. Go ahead. Why? How did my score go from 813 to 700 in one month, and I paid a car off, and they closed the account? And the only thing I did was I did a balance transfer for the 6696 where the credit card has. You said you paid off a car? A car. A card. A car. A car. C-A-R, yeah. Right. I did a balance transfer on the, the and the, so they closed the car loan. Okay. And I put it onto a card. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's an installment. That's an installment debt. That's an installment debt. I know, I know, it can happen. So it's an installment debt, right? And that is a strong thing on your report, right, Kenneth? It's like strong. So you just got rid of it, and then you threw it in the utilization category, where it affects thirty percent or so of your score. So in addition to a an account closing. And then you moving it into utilization, you kind of hit yourself twice. And here's the other thing. You might have things on your credit report that aren't reporting properly. This happens to a lot of people. So I always recommend people to talk to a credit person because maybe there's something on your credit report that's not reporting accurately. You could even, you could have these accounts that aren't reporting to all three credit bureaus. So it's messing with one score and not the other two, you know, or messing with two and not one. Right, so that's little homework for you. We're gonna evaluate our credit, see where we're at. Seven hundred is not like the end of the world. You're still in a, in a good position, but maybe not in a position to just go out and apply for something right now. We don't want to get denied, right? So we want to make sure we position ourselves really nicely to get to the next step. So. No, serious, and I'm gonna interrupt just for a that's second. That's because I remember that happening where I had a, a credit score, my credit score was 820 or something. And then all of a sudden it dropped to like a six something. You were like, what on that earth? That makes somebody want to give up on some things. <laughs> you know, and I was trying to figure out what had happened. Well, what had happened was not just, it was a perfect place, but it was right there. But one of the challenges was um, I didn't know the areas of credit that could mess you up, you know? And so I'm thinking I'm doing a good job by finishing paying this debt, not realizing that if I kill this debt, it's gonna take and reduce the time. For example, if you have a credit card, or let's say a mortgage that you've been paying off for 20 years, and you're excited to pay it off. But that was a long term that you were paying that for. So you were actually getting credit for that term. Now when they, they close that and it's off your credit, it reduces that. That's no longer on your term, on the credit anymore. And now the loans that are there might not be as long as those other ones, which then reports poorly. 
You know, um, anytime you uh, try to get credit, you might get a, a hit, you know, and that might be a 10 points. Um, everybody say a soft hit or whatever. I don't care, soft hit, hard hit. I don't want nothing to hit it. You know, so, but all of that is important, which is why, you know, when I had that 820 something credit score, I took advantage of it. And I, I went for at least 20 or so, some cars. I know that sounds crazy to some of y'all. All at once. So that it was going to hit anyway. I wanted them all to hit at once so that they could all drop off at once because it stays on your credit for two years. So we'll get deeper into the credit thing on tomorrow too. I just want him to really talk through these numbers so you guys can see the equation, what to do with this. How it, so thank you for being a brave soul. Clap yes. it up for her, y'all, you know? Yes. And sharing these numbers. So I'm gonna let him go ahead and continue with that. Uh, there is somebody who called in online and for our online audience, I want to give them an opportunity to present some numbers too. All right, so I like it. I got a good case scenario I'm gonna throw at you, All right. and I think that's gonna be good. All yeah. right, but you're on your way. You're good. Yeah, you blessed and highly favored. E even with loss of income, still good. Guys, I I know this isn't sexy. I get it. You know, some are like, nah, this is good. I know some of y'all, right? You ain't, you ain't speaking up. But to me, I get fired up about this stuff because this is, this is people's lives, right? And if we could fix the 20%, like, like I said earlier, y'all got the 80 down. Spirit apart, saved, born again, know the scripture. Okay, good. Now, let's just finish the mechanics, right? It just Go feels ahead. nice to see it. Nice to see it, it's right? Nice like, to see it in front of me instead of just the bills come, I just pay them and just throw yeah. the time away. Like, I feel like I, now I can go in the month of July and just take care of all of these mm -hmm. small ones. I have actionable over. steps. I, I mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not mapping out, you know, your whole future. and I'm not manifesting anything. I'm just like month by month, mm -hmm. line by line, day by day. Because if I get the day by day down, it's hard, come on. We're going to have the whole year jam-packed. Right? We're I mean, going to really be able to move forward. to come back by August, you know what I mean? I feel like I worked hard to get that 813 score and then for mm -hmm. them to take it away, mm -hmm. then I'm going to fix that. But it's better to see it now. I okay. see it different. Cool. All right, so I want to go to a, another person. All right, I see a hand raise. Quick question. Okay. Hold on, hold on. One sec, one sec. I'll give you a mic. This way the audience question. at home I was can trying hear. to follow the figures. How did you come up with the 637.38 divided by 365? I just wasn't sure how you got that number. 637.38 came from 18,211. That's the starting balance okay. on the line of credit. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Questions? We want to do another... Well, with this, you know how you do um, this month, this amount, then next month, it goes down by this, this month, that, next month. Can you show a little bit of that in this? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So for, let's assume we're in July working with Erica here. From July 1st to the end of July, right, balance should end up here. Right, 16,911, and then you add that borrowing cost of 2,941. This is how you would work your numbers, right? Now, just to be quick, to get an idea, my other rule here of preparing to make that chunk amount anywhere between 15, 6, 22. 40 is if we're in a position where we're already in debt on the line of credit, she made a move. I like to have my clients do velocity banking for about six to nine months on the line of credit itself, bringing the balance down. I did this with Pastor Mark. I was like, look, for the next six to nine months, you've already done your moves. Don't be doing too many moves, right? You did your moves. Let's shrink the line so we can prepare for the next chunk again. 
So you do it for about six, nine months. You bring that balance down. And then we, we prepare to see what we're going to what we're gonna hit at, right? So I'll just do a couple months here just so you can see what, how it looks like when money is flowing in and out. Just with $3,800 of income, the more money we produce, the more money we make, the, the less we spend, the more cash. This is going to speed this bad boy up, right? Even, even faster. So 16, 9, 11, again, minus income plus expenses, 25. So now I'm at 15, right? 15, 6. I'm not counting interest just yet. We can factor that in later, but I'm just going quick. All right, so you do it again, minus income, 14. 311, so July, August, September, there's 38, now we're at 13, October, so that's one, two, three, four months so far, 11, that's November, and I'll just go to December, 38 plus Boom. 10, 4, 11. December. Go from 18 in a 1, 2, 3, in a 6-month window, 18 down to 10. Right? Not, not bad. We just created space in the line of credit to make about maybe a $12,000 chunk towards any one of these debts. Now, like I said earlier, from the very beginning... If we wanted to, we could move those little ones, right, into the line of credit. And whatever little pay payments she was making all gets redirected. Obviously, her expenses go down by however much cash flow she redirected. That's the beautiful part when you move one debt from one location to another is you get the immediate cash flow from whatever that payment was. And it becomes 100% principal on the line because your income is the payment. And so you're, 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 every time a paycheck goes in, you're constantly pushing out the due date and you're pushing the interest out further and further. It's really cool stuff. And then you throw in that credit card and it's like adding a, a little a nitro boost to what you're doing. So we go from 18 to 10 and we say, all right, uh, now that we got a little handle we got our feet wet we're doing velocity banking great cool what could we hit next right so we could go after i well this one expires in march that one's june so we might not touch those we might hit up that car you said the car was paid off or no Because this is about the only attractive thing out of out of everything outside of those little ones getting the paid only, off. Is the to, only attractive thing up there, the car. Yeah. It was a very poor decision I made. Very poor. I'm living with it. I co-signed. And, you know, the other party is not forthcoming with the situation. But it's okay, though, because, you know, good life lesson. I'm, I'm in the process of going to sell the truck. But that's never, ever, please, somebody... Co-sign for people. Yeah, I learned my lesson with co-signing too. Ain't I, pretty. Do, I don't even. I don't even drive the car. Yeah. But you know. So you you have to pay it off. Oh, I know. I'm making payments. No, I'm, I'm asking. The twenty one eight. How much you want for it? Look at that. Opportunity. It's a, a okay. fifteen F one fifty. So oh, I've been trying to get like. 26 for it. Okay. Silver. Okay. So, so a really, 15, uh, uh, so you're not even, you're not trying to pay that off. You're trying to get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of it. Gotcha. So Absolutely. that's great. Cause I can't, I don't, I don't, I, I, I paid my car off. I don't got time to be. You don't got time for that. With a, uh, so really your, your, your objective is really getting rid of that, that HELOC. Mm -hmm. And so if we could get out of the, the, the HELOC is stuck. Right, it's now seven hundred and something dollars a month, right? Killer, killer payment. If we can go back into a home equity line of credit, right? We could 
accelerate it because now we can dump our whole income into it. And so that really is the focus. And then from there, we could go to the mortgage if we wanted to, right? We can go to a first lien HELOC. Maybe that's an option uh, right from the top. There's a lot of different things that we could, yeah. you know, do so with when this. When that car leaves my life, which is going to be soon, um, I'll be you, okay. You, you get that back. Absolutely. And then that would go in there. And that just speeds up the timeline, you know, if we're able to open up that, that line of credit. Let's go to Tim. Hold on. Let's get you a mic. And then I th you said there was a case study, Mark, from caller? Go ahead. Let's get those mics on. Hold on. Hello. There we go. All right. Perfect. So the 18, I'm just trying to understand, the 18 to 11 that she has in the, in the HELOC, right? She can't get another debt weapon from her mortgage until she pays that eighteen eleven off, two eleven off. Yeah, you right. Can, I've never heard. I think once of having a third lien. Got it. Okay. I think you can only go two down. Now I think you can go three. I, I think it's like super rare. Now, in your opinion, like, I mean, I know this is her deal, right? But would you recommend? taking the money from the savings and paying that off and then she can have a debt weapon like at her disposal right away. She right? wouldn't. She wouldn't because it's it's already locked up. She's right, already she had can it for apply 10 apply for another one because then she, granted we get approved. Okay. Right? Okay. So that's why I just want to make sure that we communicate with the bank cuz the the two options that I see is she could go to a bank and say I've got this HELOC and I got this mortgage. Give me a first lien HELOC. Maybe she could talk to all in one loan what CMG uh, financial, true. maybe they might help mm -hmm. or she can go to first lean HELOC.com. Maybe they could help. That would be a, you know, a potential resource and I'll, I'll send you those. Um, so you can talk to some mortgage people, right? And so you've got some cool options here. We just want to make sure that because of that huge drop in credit score, that that doesn't get us denied. So we want to make sure we're back on a good rhythm going on to the next thing. So great question. Good case. You said Next you know? case scenario? Yeah. Ready? Okay. Okay, everybody, are y'all okay? Y'all okay? St stand up one more time. Stretch a little bit. Stretch a little bit. Stretch a little bit. We about to put y'all to work. Come on, yeah. this is what it's all about. Real quick, while you guys are watching online, thank you for tuning in. We got another case scenario we're getting ready to do. I want everybody very quick, take three minutes to meet somebody that you don't know in this room. Meet somebody that you don't know in this room. Walk it out, meet somebody that you don't know in this room. Introduce yourself to somebody. Yeah. Will I, will, will I, will I be talking to her or no? Okay. All right, go ahead, take your seat. That was good. After this is all over, you guys can get each other's numbers and talk a little bit more. All right, you guys, you guys are ready? Online, man, I'm, I'm praying you guys are loving this. I'll say this. Online, if you're watching, we do not know your name. And we are going to use some fictitious names, okay? I'm going to wait just a little bit till the room gets back together. Let's get us back together, everybody. And I want everybody to hear these numbers because this is a pretty much a half a million dollar case that we're getting ready to get into. All right? So this is going to be major. Um, and there might be somebody who owes more than that. Uh, but your your only option is not you know a lot a lot of people go bankrupt, um, and there's some cases you know where they use that, but that's not the only option. So we're going to show you different options, different case scenarios. This one is a little bit more challenging. Okay, this is not for the faint at heart. 
We started off very low. Um, $7,000 worth of income coming in, only owe $4,000 worth of debt. Beautiful, you're gonna be debt free very soon. Then we went up to about 60, 76 something thousand dollars. Okay, good, we're almost there. We got some strategy. All right, but what happens when you're head over heels almost in debt? You and your husband, all right? Head over heels and your family is, is facing all these challenges and you know things are going on in the world. How, how are we gonna make it? Let's talk about some real life scenarios. Um, and I'll say this, the way we're approaching this, these are not the only options, okay? A windfall might come where somebody, your long lost cousin that you never knew went to heaven and left you $2 million. Only one person received it in the back, I think. <laughs> Which is a shameless plug for me to say everybody in this church needs a life insurance policy of some sort. All right, I would recommend that. I would admonish you to get life insurance, okay? Now, there are some people who are self-insured. That's a whole nother thing, but I would challenge you. Um, we don't believe in GoFundMe funerals. We don't believe in that, all right? So um, prepare. We prepare to live, but also let's prepare to transition and make sure that we have life insurance. Okay, here we go. Here's the numbers, you ready? Everybody ready? Y'all writing with him? Don't let him do all the work. Write with him. Come on. Check it like this is yours. Act like this is yours. Write this down. Use your calculators. Good morning. Below are my numbers from my husband and I. My husband, let's just say his name is Joe. His credit score is 751. And Jane, that's her, she is, her credit score is 685. Now, we own two properties and have tenants in each property. I try to be as thorough as possible. If there's anything else you need to, to, to know, please let me know. Okay, here's her total inc their total income. Income is $9,520. I'm assuming that's a month. $9,520. The total expenses are $8,630. Okay. The total debt sum is five hundred and thirty-four thousand three hundred and sixty-seven. Okay, dollars. Total cash flow eight hundred and ninety dollars at the end of the month. Okay. Um, they they gave me this, and I'm just gonna say what they put on here: personal income. Is five thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars. Um, personal expenses, three thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars. I don't is know why was additional income. It I just, think it's all together. I don't know. Um, personal income, personal expenses, personal savings. Yeah, do the savings. What are they on savings? Five hundred dollars. I think they save five hundred dollars a month. I'm going to imagine. But it just says personal savings, $500. So maybe that's all they got in there. I'm not sure. Let's assume that. All right. Personal debt expenses. Personal debt expenses is $1,000, which is a little confusing with that. It's probably coming out of here. Okay. And total expense sum, $5,290. Let's add that. So what was it? $5,000. 290. 290 plus what was yeah. the other number? Um, well, the personal income was, five, and turn his mic up a little bit more. The personal income was 5,790. Personal expenses was 3,790. Personal savings was 500. Personal debt expenses, 1,000. So I, mm. she, she might be making more money because I'm getting a $10,000 number. Yeah. Right? Y'all was getting that? So she might be making more income than the 9520. Maybe that's from the business. And then she said her personal debt, the personal debt total balance is 215221 So I'm a little confused about that. She's separating personal debt from business debt. 
Okay. okay. So I'm just going to lump it all together. Okay, good. Uh, uh, for the I, time I, being. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Business for the rental properties, maybe. Yeah. So all right. Like. So you want me to give the inc personal income again? No, because I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just roll with what I got here. It, okay. It does sound a little too confusing. Did she break down debt by debt? Um. Yes. Let's do that. All right. That'll help. So. Yeah. I think what I think what happened. I think that right there, that number right there, the total income, total expenses, total debt sum. I think that's her property. I think I think I could be wrong. Okay. All right. Now her personal income. Let's do. Per, let's try to do a personal stuff. Okay. So her personal income five thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars. Personal expenses three thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars. Personal savings five hundred dollars. Um, personal debt expenses. Or personal debt, I guess. It, huh? well, it says a thousand dollars. Total expense sum five thousand two hundred and ninety dollars. I'm a little confused. Five thousand two ninety, so five thousand seven ninety. Five thousand seven ninety minus five thousand two ninety. She said her personal debt total balance is two hundred and fifteen thousand. And two eleven, two eleven, and then uh, two twenty one. I'm sorry, not two eleven, two twenty one. And then she broke it down with a student loan. Number one, she has one student loan for fifty seven thousand sixty five. Her student loan two is eight thousand seven hundred and sixty seven. Student loan three is forty six thousand three hundred and thirty one. She might be a doctor. Lawyer. Maybe. Student loan four is forty three thousand two hundred and seventy eight. Never mind. That's a doctor. Huh? That's a, that's a doctor. Sure? Uh, say it again. Forty three thousand two seventy eight. I wonder if these are all in deferment. Now, she got a car lease. I don't consider that debt. Okay. Yeah. Because there's no, even if I paid it off early, there's no advantage okay. there. There's no interest being charged. She has state debt of 790 State debt? Yeah. Like IRS? Yep. Okay, so I'll just put IRS. Her cash flow, right? That, I wrote that there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's the state debt? Seven ninety. Just seven ninety. Yep. Okay, seven hundred ninety bucks. And she got some credit cards. Her Apple credit card is three thousand one hundred and forty. Okay. Um, she has an interest rate of zero percent until balance is paid, and let's just say that interest period is six more months because the, the period is not there. Um, the credit limit is 9000 on that. Okay. No big deal. All right. What's the payment? All right. Payment per month. She's not paying anything right now. All right. So Ashley Furniture, yeah. $2,745 is old. Okay. Payment per month is $80. Did she put interest rate or no? Interest rate, no. Right, zero percent interest rate. I'm sorry. Zero. Yes, she did. Zero percent interest rate. Okay. Next. Until March 2025. What? Nice. I'm never paying that off. <laughs> Capital One credit card. Yeah. Um, she has 115 dollars that she owes on that. Okay, 115. Interest rate is 27.24 percent. Wow. Good thing it's a low balance. Yeah. Cool. Next. Um, payment per month is $25. Okay. Next. Uh, Capital One, the second card is $490. Yep. Interest rate of 25.24. Yep. 
$25 a month. Okay. Chase credit card. Um, she has $6,580 that she owes on that. Yep. Um, 22.74%. Okay. $15 a month. Okay. How do you do that? Uh, Chase credit card two, $4,000. Interest rate. 4,000 flat? 4,000 flat, yeah. Okay. Interest rate of 23.74%. $80 a month. Yep. Discover card. Shout out to Discover card. God bless you, Discover card. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the payment on that four grand? Um, the four grand, $80. $80, all right. Yep. Remaining balance, she, well, she don't owe anything on those. She don't owe anything on Discover. She doesn't. She has a credit limit for that of twelve thousand. She don't owe anything on it. She has a Liberty credit card. She don't owe anything on that credit limit of ten thousand five hundred. Um, and she even tells us what she's making for her property. All right. Um, so, was there another credit card? Nope. So after four thousand, nothing else. No other debts. Nope. Okay, and then you said she's now going into the mortgage debts? Yes, well, yeah, she's yeah. just, yeah, that's right. Uh huh. She, which might give us some kind of understanding. Might give us more. Yeah. Yeah, either so, she's 700 plus thousand in debt mm -hmm. or 534, which is. Yeah. So her property heavy. one income is $2,600 a month with expenses of 1220 All right, so property income you said is 26 Yep, yeah, twenty six hundred. All right. Um, expenses that. for that property is twelve twenty. Um, okay. For savings five hundred she puts on there, and then the debt is one thirty one four eight eight. One thirty one four eight eight as her mortgage. That's what she owes. She's cash flowing eight eighty on that. And then property number two income is eleven thirty. Her expenses are sixteen twenty. Her debt is one eight seven six five eight. So you said eleven thirty? Yeah, yeah, she's in the hole there. In the hole, okay. Yeah. One eight seven six five eight is what she owes on that property. 160 one, eight, one, eight, seven, six, five, eight. So one, 160 uh, one, one, eight, seven. Oh, 187,000. Yep. Okay. yep. One, eight, seven, six, five, eight. One, eight, seven, six, five, eight. Yep. And her cash flow is negative 490. Right. Cash at it. Okay. Did she put the interest rates on those? No. Okay. So let's see if all these numbers add up to the 534 real quick. So it's that 187 plus the 131. Yeah, so this is 319. So 57. She didn't. She didn't uh, write it. She had a debt tool, right? So we're assuming no debt tool. All right. So I'm at. Yeah, I'm at four eighty eight four four seven. So here's an example of someone not, right, putting all their numbers, and that's okay. If, you know, that took a lot just to do that. So I like to always, you know, acknowledge people for making the effort. Um, but, you know, we've got to, we have to do better. You know, if we're going to be a debt-free kingdom, we've got to know all the numbers that are coming in, right? So 
It sounded like confusion from the start. We're still confused. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to really provide the, the best guidance for this couple, right? If they were here, it'd be a totally different story. Um, but from what I see personally, first thing that I want to look at is... Oh, okay. Okay, can Testing, one, two. Okay, go ahead and speak. Hello. All right. Y'all give her a hand. Yeah. Hey, hey. So, yeah, can you can you just give it like that? Hello? Yeah. All right. So Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um so let me explain. Go ahead. All right, let me I'm sorry, I got to turn my computer off. So, I I put at the top of the email all the sum totals of everything our monies from our personal money and our properties. So the sum total, that 9520, that's our personal money and our property money. And then underneath is the separation between the two, our personal debt and our property debt, our personal expenses and our property expenses. Okay, so there's a discrepancy in the on the on the mortgage side of the debt. You wrote five thirty four three six seven as the total amount of debt. I got two properties: one at one thirty one four eighty eight, one at one eighty seven six five eight. I'm not sure if you can see the whiteboard as you're listening to me talk, but what we're trying to figure out as a group is what is the total income coming, everything coming in together? Is it 9520 or is it higher? So everything I get per month is 9520 And that includes my money and the, and the property money. Gotcha. Which means that there's a net cash flow of $890 from right. personal Between and Business. Between my money and the property money. Right. Okay. So, do you currently have a debt tool? And as I'm asking that question, do you have uh, previous knowledge of the velocity banking concept or are you brand new? I don't have a debt tool. Oh. I'm actually talking to a loan officer on Monday about getting a HELOC on one of the properties. Okay, so you're in the process of getting a HELOC, right? Yes. Have you been approved? I didn't catch that, I'm sorry. Have, have you been approved? No, we, I didn't even start the process yet. I, I'm meeting with her on Monday. Okay, okay, we haven't, so we haven't, got you, we haven't started that process yet. Um, would we be applying under husband's name alone or the two of you together? It will be the two of us. Okay. So they may want to uh, evaluate where you're at, but they might. So he'll be the primary and you're the spouse. I forget how they, how they list that, secondary. But essentially, when it comes to husband and wife, they both have to sign off on the HELOC anyways. So your name's going to be on there. Um, under which property are you looking to get the home equity line of credit? The one with the higher mortgage. The one eighty seven? The one eighty seven? Yes. What's the value of that property? Right now it's two sixty two seventy. Two sixty two seventy. Okay, and we owe 187, and usually we can get up to, what, 80% LTV, so let's see, 260. I just need you to make one correction. Go ahead. Actually, two. 
What's she say? That last credit card, that's sixty five eighty. Yeah. I pay one fifty a month. That makes sense. Not fifteen. Perfect. All right. Awesome. And then the 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 first credit card that's thirty one forty is forty dollars a month. What she say? This one? One forty. That's what she said? No, not one forty. The the first one that's thirty one forty, I pay forty dollars a month. Forty dollars a month. Okay. How much time do you have left on that? Zero percent. I have um a year. Oh she gets she said she got a year. Okay. Years. Okay, cool. So one year on that. That's nice. Is there anything else you need from me? Because I'm on a delay, so I can't really hear what or see what you're doing. Okay, that's fine. She's on the delay. If you need clarity. Okay. About anything else? Yeah, no, we're we're good. I think we've got everything we need now. Okay, so I'm just gonna watch and take notes if that's okay. If we say we need you, you're gonna have to call back in. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye. All right. right. Bye. All right. So she said she's in the process of getting a HELOC. It sounded like she has some previous knowledge of the concept. So I'm going to assume she's watched some of my videos. I'm going to assume she's been looking into this concept. She's been paying attention all the, this whole entire uh, day so far. When it comes to HELOCs, there's certain banks that will lend up to 95% of the LTV. And then like, I think the lowest being like 70, 80, right? 70, 80% LTV. So I took the 262 that it's valued at, that she told me, minus from what's owed. That's how much equity is available. And then I times that number by 80%. I got 59 grand. So I, I don't see why we can't get a $50,000 line of credit with this type of income. 50,000, I think HELOC rates are starting to float around four and 6%. Some may be higher, uh, but again, the rate is not nearly as important as what the effective rate can be. If we can bring the effective rate down to one to 2%, sometimes zero, then I could care less what this rate is because what I'm actually paying is significantly less. So let's assume she got a HELOC in the second position and we'll go with the highest rate, say 6% is what she gets. We wanna shoot for anything below whatever the rates are, right? Oh, that was one thing, if we could, if we could get the rate, maybe she can comment. Um, but we wanna know what the rates on these are. In this particular scenario, we obviously don't go after the highest debts. Um, in the debt snowball world, you don't do that. In the debt avalanche world, you typically don't do that because there's, you're looking at highest interest that you're paying. So I like it when I'm looking at these major popular concepts, right? Where we can look at debt snowball, debt avalanche, velocity banking, have all three of them line up, essentially, right? When you're running your numbers and then you're like, this is the most effective way to go, right? So you're not tricking yourself, you're, you're validating the numbers, very important. Let's say I get access to 50 grand, let's run our, our rules. She's cash flowing um, $890, I'm assuming, or it might just be 500, right? Anywhere from 500 to 890, right? We're, I'm not totally sure on that, but I'll, I'll just go with the 890 for right now. We do 890 times 12, it is it is five o'clock, so I know we're gonna have to wrap up soon, so I'll try to like be quick with it. So 890 times 12 is 10,680, so if you if you're, you know, you're taking notes. These are my velocity banking rules that I like to apply for myself. 
right? 50,000 times 66%, 33. Okay. This is my chunk range. Anywhere from as low as 10,680 to as high as 33 grand. Okay, Denzel? Yes. She reported that the first mortgage is 3.5% and the second mortgage is 3.25%. Okay. And then we want to know if, um, if she's getting, if she's making payments or if these are all deferred. So let's ask her that question, what she's paying or if they're all on deferred. Um, but the most attractive thing I see so far as of right now, because she doesn't have a HELOC yet, what do we do when we don't have a debt tool? We revert to debt snowball positioning, pregame work, right? So she can easily go after the smallest debts here, that 115 done, the 790, so 790 and 115. 905, right? We could do that, or right here, that 490. All right, so let's do that instead because that's smaller. So 115 plus 490. So debt snowball loan, we can easily get rid of this one, easily get rid of that one. Redirect 50 bucks. 890 minus 605. I still got 285 left over. She can take that 285, apply it towards here, right? Are you with me so far? Nothing crazy, right? 790 minus 285 for this month, right? June. We're assuming, like I said, usually at the end of every month is where we see our cash flow. So we're, it's June 24th. We're approaching the end of the month. Let's assume that she hasn't sent her cash flow out anywhere yet. I would say, knock out that card, knock out that card, right? The rest of your cash flow, apply it to the IRS, you're down to 505. I'm pretty sure that IRS debt is charging her interest. Pretty sure, right? <laughs> we don't know how much, but we know she's definitely getting charged. This is on zero, this is on zero, we ignore. This debt right here is the next most attractive debt to go after. That's 6580, 22.74% at 150. Okay? So let's assume we got that 6% interest rate. Um, let's say, on average, from what I've seen with clients, Tim, you can validate this to get a HELOC, usually about a two month process, one, two months, just depends. Right. You don't have one? Oh, but you're in the process of getting the, the, the all in one soon. So, I know, uh, how long was it for the P-Lock? That was like a couple weeks, right? Okay. So when we're getting a personal line of credit, usually it's a couple of weeks, sometimes a couple days. But with a home equity line of credit, sometimes they like to do um, a, an appraisal, whether it be a drive-by, they'll maybe even um, evaluate, the, evaluate the property value, then you gotta go through underwriting, they're going to want to see bank statements, income reports. There's a, they take you to a whole process. So let's say one to two months, three months max of snowball, debt snowball, right? June, this month, we killed two cards, paid off a, a portion of IRS. July, 890 minus 505, 385 left, so July... That's done, all right, so that's gone. This was in June, this was in June, okay? And then 385 should go here to the 6580. So 6580 plus 150, 535, so 6580 minus 535. By the end of July, balance on this credit card should be somewhere around 645, right? I didn't count the payment that she made in June. I'm gonna assume she already made a payment. You tack on a little interest there, maybe it's 6,070 by the end of July, right? 
So by August, let's say we have the HELOC. It's active, it's in our bank accounts, ready to go. Um, it's at the same bank that she makes her income at. Now, she's got business and personal income, okay? Now, depending on how her structure is, if she has an LLC, which is just simply a pass-through entity, okay, she can take the incomes from these properties and she can park it in the HELOC, right? And then when she needs to pay expenses for her business, she can just move it from the HELOC back into the business operating account, the checking account, business checking account that the LLC is registered. Be sure to talk to your CPA so that they can keep track with the transaction. We don't want to uh, essentially co-mingle funds here. Um, so I have seen clients successfully do this. I've had their CPAs validate it in terms of how they, um, how they identify the transactions, the movement from business to personal, personal back to business, right? Any questions on that? Go ahead. We get a mic. That's what. Yeah, that's what. Essentially, what I'm saying. So, in in her case, we know that she has personal income and that business income. So, when the the revenue that she gets from either the rental properties, or if she has a business, I'm not sure, it lands in her business checking account. This is a personal home equity line of credit on a, a, a rental, or it might be, a, it might be a, a business rental, right? So if it's through the business, that's probably even cleaner sometimes. Then it's just a matter of moving your personal income to the um, home equity line of credit, and it just it sits there. Right when it's ready to be deployed, move it back out, and you send it to its proper locations. Right, there's there's no issue in just having money parked in your debt tool, whether it's a business line of credit or personal line of credit. But what is important is talking with your CPA, your accountant. So they're on the same page. They know what you're doing. They're going to see all these transactions going on. You know, so they want to be aware. I think that's important. Let's assume we are now in August, right? It's August. We've got 6,045 owed. That's the next attractive debt that I want to hit up. These two debts we're going to ignore. And when it comes to her student loans, let's say they're all private. So that means they're not on deferred. And she's getting charged interest, and she's making a payment. I'm sorry, Denzel. She said that there's no payments on the student loans. They are actually in deferment right now. OK. So they're all on deferment, right? OK. We're in a good position here. So they're probably not accumulating interest at the moment. Only thing I, I see of value is to simply move that credit card into the HELOC. And that's a little too loud, I think, the, my microphone. I just heard it go really loud. Um, so that's about really it. Now, if she wanted to do some damage on these properties, she said, oh, yeah, it was on this one. What was the rate? I put 3.5 and then 3.25, right? Oh, it's right there. OK. So all we would have to do is prove that we can bring our borrowing costs from 6%, that's the rate that they gave us, let's just say, to below 3.25. And that is not hard to do. If we can get the borrowing costs down to 1% to 2%, What's happening is not only did we move the 187 at 3.25 amortized 
to 6%, 6% becomes 1% to 2%, simple interest, right? You, you drastically eliminate all that interest on the amortized loan. I want you guys that have mortgages to print out your amortization schedule on your property and you're gonna see like this drastic number of, of interest. And it's all front loaded in the beginning. When you pay ahead on an amortized loan, it literally cancels the interest. So it, it will never arrive again, right? You literally cancel it. You bring it in here, it was interest you were gonna pay anyways in the HELOC. Now all I'm doing is paying a significantly lesser amount. And then you combine all income going into that debt tool, combine it with cashback rewards on credit cards, and we start to lower that borrowing cost tremendously. So for this particular lady, this is what I, I see personally. We can start off with Snowball. We work our way to acquiring a HELOC, 50K, even if it was 30 grand, right? We could, we could do damage, right? We don't have to you know, try to get the most amount, but I don't see any issue with 50. I think we can get HELOC rates in this environment between four and 6%. We run our borrowing costs, and it's just a matter of um, figuring out what this lady wants to do, whether does she have a desire to pay these off, right? Let's say she doesn't. She's like, I don't care. These are cash flowing, right? Um, except for this one, right? This was negative. Right? So she may want to kill that. Let's just say she does. All right. If that's the case, we could do velocity banking here first. And I've worked with clients with significant student loan debts, them, them white collar careers, right? I'll have them go to the corporation that they work for, and we can negotiate their student loan debt. So instead of getting a bonus pay, right? And I think Kenneth can maybe, he might have some mixed feelings on this, all right? But I'm gonna get your opinion on this. If there's an opportunity, I work at a corporation, I can get a promotion, increase my income by say 2%, 3%, my tax bracket goes up, right? My, my tax bill will go up terms of because I'm still in the employment realm if you were to look at what do I net from that two five seven percent increase in pay versus negotiating with the company to maybe wipe out a lot of your student loan debt by making a one two three year commitment right even though your income doesn't go up in that jurisdiction as an employee or self-employed, you eliminate six plus figures of debt by making an agreement with the corporation, the amount of time it would have took you anyways, even with the pay increases and promotions and bonus pay, either is gonna be the same amount of time or longer Right? In most cases, it's longer, but you would, you're betting that you are going to get those pay increases and bonuses. Those may or may not come. But if we can get something in writing from the corporations that we work for to say, hey, pay these off, right? get rid of these, then you can maybe focus on investing right? the difference that you would have sent to the debt. So maybe her and her husband to get together and say, hey, what's God's purpose for our life? right? What is God's will for our life? How can we turn that into a business plan, which generates cash flow in a different tax status, business owner, investor, reducing tax liability, increasing net cash flow, that cash flow could potentially wipe all this out. In the same time frame, right? Let's just say 534,000 on average with my clients, we have a five to seven year window, right? Five to seven year window 
This is logical, right? Not including spiritual help, guidance, right? Like having faith. A pastor was telling me how he was talking to me how the church got, got paid off. I was like, so what strategy did you use? And he was like, 21-day fasting. I said, how'd that work? I was like, I was like, wait a minute. How, how do I write that out? Like, <laughs> how do I teach my clients that? Wait a minute. So um, I, I would love to have a